back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Yep, it's the day after Christmas. We're back on the Russian ProMaster disaster van. What's the story with this thing? So, as you can see, there's a nice blanket over it. Uh, where did we leave off last time? Uh, yes, I tried installing the replacement PCM to basically solve that, you know. The PCM got waterlogged and it was throwing those coil ionization codes and cutting out the front bank of cylinders. We found major green crusties in connector C2 from water intrusion and most of the pins, the coil control pins were, were really rough. I tried spraying it out with deoxid, compressed air, brushing all the pins, didn't help. So I told the, uh, the shop owner here, Kip, and the two Russian delivery drivers that, hey, you guys need an engine computer and you need to fix this water leak. So, they scheduled an appointment with the dealership about 12 miles away uh, to get a used computer program to this van. A couple days later, now the van you know, had garbage bags over the computer, they said they started up and it ran on six cylinders. <clears throat> That's impressive. So either the deoxid did its magic over a couple days and the van ran smoothly on six cylinders. So I'm like, oh, maybe they don't need a new computer. Maybe this one is still functional as long as you keep the water out of it. So. Um, they still had that appointment, they're like, well, better play it safe, we'll still go to the dealer, drive it there, and get this used computer programmed. Well, they started driving to the dealer, and literally a few blocks down the road, the transmission went into limp home mode, and Kip said that it threw two codes, two brand new codes, uh, the 0714, now I think we saw that one before, and a 0760. So the 714 was for the transmission temperature sensor circuit and the 760 was for the overdrive solenoid circuit. So they limped it to the dealer in whatever, second or third gear um, and left it there and then the dealer says, sorry, we can't program a used computer. It's throwing the skim key code. You need a new BCM to like match it up. I don't think they knew what they were doing because you should be able to, with you know, the Chrysler OEM software, do that proxy matching or whatever. Um, so the dealer was absolutely useless. Um, then they drove the van back here, again, in limp transmission mode, all in, uh, running on six cylinders, perfectly fine, they, you know, the engine runs fine. And now, we have to, you know, I tried talking um, Kip through you know, what I would do to take care of those transmission codes. Obviously, we still suspect water intrusion. Um, I told him, check the connector on the transmission. It's like a 23-pin bulk connector. He took that off and he said it was full, not of water, of coolant. <laughs> I'm like, well, holy crap, all the pins are green and crusty. I'll show you some pictures of that. looked really bad. Where did the coolant come from? Well apparently this van again has a long history. There was a coolant leak at some point and it filled that harness up with coolant and it got into the transmission connector. So again same similar problem, different connector, different codes. So I talked him through how to clean the pins, you know, remove the little plastic pin retainer. He got that done, took it for another test drive. Um, he almost celebrated a little too early, he said the transmission temperature sensor code went away. So there was some bridging of green crusties between the pins at the transmission connector. However, the P0690 or uh, 760 came back, the overdrive circuit. Here it is, and today we're using a brand new scanner. This is a launch X431 Pro 3S Plus version 2.0. So it's very similar to the ThinkTool Pros. It's actually quite a bit lighter and more portable. 
it's faster and it can do auto auth on Chrysler's 2018 and newer because it's a launch name brand scanner. So I'm going to try this one out as my main daily workhorse. We'll see how it does. So far, so good. Nice bright screen, same size screen, but the it's just thinner. Anyways, we do have this 760 OD control circuit code. So that's where we are. Let's diagnose this thing. Um, you know, Kip is kind of running out of options. He's like, well, I cleaned that connector. Apparently connector C2 in the PCM got water in it again. So we might have to go back to that. As you can see, he's been trying to keep the water off of it. It may or may not be working. So hopefully today we can get this man driving with no fault codes. All right, so where, where do we begin? We just have one fault code in the PCM, this P0760 OD solenoid control circuit, pending. I did some homework on this thing, and the control wires to the transmission all go from PCM connector C1, the one that was dry. So, several variables. I'm still suspecting a connector or wiring issue here, uh, but we'll you know, we'll prove that and hopefully fix it, no parts required. That is my hope today. But in actuation test, we can actually activate these solenoids, I think, we should be able to. Okay, there we go. Oh, overdrive solenoid. So we have six solenoids total. Five of them supposedly work fine, overdrive solenoid does not. So what we can do is you know, do a bi-directional test of the good ones versus the bad ones. Uh, I was thinking measure the current going through to the solenoids with a scope. Uh, we'll look up the code setting criteria, see exactly what the computer is looking for to set these codes, and then uh, try to figure out why the OD solenoid is setting the code. Alright, so I got the big tarp off the windshield. Just want to start it up, see how it runs. Just want to back it up a hair and get it out of this puddle. Okay. Just go back in the PCM, rescan it for codes. That's it. 760 is pending. Even the check engine light isn't on. Seems to be happy. All right. Let's do a visual inspection first. See if anything's really wet. <laughs> Go from there. So obviously the tarp did absolutely nothing to prevent puddles because, well, the water drains down along the windshield and then along the towel and drips everywhere. So there's another bag over the engine computer here. I don't know if that was effective or not. We'll see. Get all this stuff out of the way. And the transmission connector, you see, has a bag over that. And that has water on it. <laughs> let's do some checks. All right, let's do a little bit of research on this P0760 trouble code. So I printed off the PDF from All Data. This is the entire description for this code. So there's our wiring diagram, there's the PCM, and then there's the actual transmission. See these are the control wires, and then the pressure signals corresponding. And power is there, and it has a ground going back to the PCM. Theory of operation. Six solenoids are used to control the friction elements clutches. Continuity of the solenoid circuits is periodically tested. Each solenoid is turned on or off depending on its current state. An inductive spike should be det detected by the PCM during this test. If no spike is detected, the circuit is tested again to verify the failure. In addition to the periodic testing, solenoid circuits are tested if a gear ratio or pressure switch error occurs. In this case, one failure will result in the appropriate DTC being set. Mill will illuminate, transmission goes into neutral, DTC set above 35 miles per hour, 22 miles per hour, limp in mode when vehicle speed is below 22 miles per hour. Okay. 
One failure will result in the appropriate DTC being set. No spike is detected. Circuit is tested again. Verify the failure. All right, so it's looking for inductive spikes. What does that scream at me? Get the scope out. Look for these inductive spikes during a bidirectional test. That's exactly what I want to do. So the van's running now just fine. It's happy. Let's uh, go to these control wires. So on the wiring diagram, let's see here. Powertrain. It's got to be this one. Let's zoom in. Use our hand tool. So OD control goes from pin 5 at the PCM to pin 19 at the transmission. What I want to do is have two channels on the scope, find this wire. Uh, we can actually test a neighbor, for example, DC control. We know that's not setting a code. Measure the voltage on there and the current, and then toggle it with, with the scanner and get a, a known good capture, current and voltage. And then we'll go to OD control, pin 5, this gray wire, do the same check, see if there's any difference. All right, here we go. Keys on. We've got the scanner. We're going to do the bidirectional control. I have two channels. Channel 1 is on pin 2, which is a yellow, I'm sorry, a white wire. That will be the DC control wire. And the amp clamp is also on that wire. So when we energize it, we should see both on channel 1, see right now the voltage is at battery voltage. I guess it's going to be a pull down, unless the solenoid is energized right now and it's a pull up. So we don't know. Um, and then the current's going to be down here. So I'm not exactly sure where the DC is. I think it's DR. It might be labeled. So toggle on off mode. Is it clicking? Okay, there we go. Okay, great. So we're seeing current. Let's flip the amp clamp around, or we can just flip our signal around here. Is it still going? Let me do that one more time. Let's see, back out. Try that again. DR solenoid, that's definitely the right one. activating right now. Oh, there it goes. One, two, three, four. I think that's it. So we can work with this data. So it's looking for an inductive spike that, that's what it's looking for right there. It goes up to 50 volts. You notice my scale is plus or minus 50 volts. And there's the current. It goes to you know, 1 volt is 10 amps. So if we measure this, minus 850 millivolts, that means minus 8 amps at, you know, at the initial start. And then it kind of holds it there at 200 60 millivolts, which is 2.6 amps. So that's perfect. We got a known good. I'm going to save that and let's go to the overdrive solenoid and see what that does. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Overdrive solenoid. So I relocated the amp clamp to the gray wire and we're still on channel one on the voltage. So let's see what happens. Boom. There's another test. Is that it? Right 
there. I don't hear any clicks. But I didn't hear any clicks on the other one either. This seems to be doing what it should. So let's back up. Take a look at this. Exactly the same amperages, exactly the same voltages. Yep, 290 millivolts there. And the first one is 700 millivolts, about seven, seven amps to open it, and then it holds it, and it shuts it off. Let's look at the next one. So I held it open there for, this is in milliseconds, so I just ramped it up and then shut it off. Hmm. Why did it only do it twice? So let me save this and see if it sent any codes or what's going on there. All right guys, I'm not seeing any issues with this solenoid at all. There it even did a, you know, hold, then release, you know, full current and then keep holding, and then off. And you see the nice inductive spike, that's what the computer's looking for, that tells it the solenoid's actually moving, it should be okay. I don't know. I think we'll have to take it for the test drive. Let's even get that code to pop back up. Who knows? I also want to, you know, before we do that, look at connector C2, see how green and crusty that is. We might have to clean that again just for reliability. Alright, so before a test drive, I'm checking on connector C2. <sighs> yeah, it's got a little moisture in there for sure. Let's see. Some of the pins are getting a little green again. So I'm gonna blow that out, clean that out one more time, and we'll take this thing on a test drive. All right, connector's cleaned out, everything's reconnected. Let's fire it up, make sure it's happy. Read codes in the PCM. Should be no codes since it was unplugged. Now we're ready for the test drive while reading some data on these solenoids. So, I'm going to find, that's 200 data pids, I'm going to find the six solenoids and let's see if uh, the search feature works here, solenoid, no, let's see, OD, OD clutch, state, OD pressure switch, so we can do clutch, clutch state, And then, <clears throat> I wish it would keep the ones that you type in. You, I also want to look at the pressure. You know, these LC, DC, OD pressure switches, LR. All right, here we go. Kip's behind the wheel. Fear not, I am He's, a semi-professional. So you said it'll happen uh, after the th second or third shift? You won't get to that uh, intersection before it. Okay, so we're... If it's going to. We're interested in the OD pressure switch and OD clutch. And a gentle bit. Yep. Oh, yeah. Over the hump. Still beeping. <laughs> yeah, it's... It's not shifting already. It is not shifting already. Now I, I feel like I felt it fail. Yeah, we are in limp mode. Okay, you're already in limp mode and we saw nothing on there. But look, OD pressure switch says closed and I don't think it's supposed to be. So pull over somewhere and put in park somewhere safe in the side street. I see. And we'll see what code set. I think this right here, I think it's more of a logic problem than ah. a circuit problem. That OD pressure switch should say open when the clutch is not applied. All right, we are in park. Okay, we're in park. So I'm going to save a picture of this. Yep. And then we'll back up, and I'm sure it set the 760 code. I'm sure it did. Read fault code. Perfect. 760 pending. 
So now we need to look at the wiring diagram and figure out what the uh, oil pressure switch is doing if there's water intrusion, if there's some pin cross pin contamination on that circuit. So it's not a control circuit fault, it's a logic fault because it's saying, hey, the solenoid's energized for some reason, even though we never saw any current or voltage being applied to that solenoid. So back to the shop. Back to the shop. Okay, so we clear the codes out and I'm looking at the OD clutch state and the OD pressure switch. So that says open now. Give it a little gas just in park. Okay, everything's fine. We're monitoring transmission oil temperature as well. So now that pressure switch should not go to closed unless the OD clutch state is applied. So let's start driving back to the shop and we'll see if that OD pressure switch changes for whatever reason. There it was. Ah. Now that's it, now you're in limp mode. Correct. Wow, so that, that was even like just first and second gear. Correct, as soon as it goes to shift, I, I, I forget because how the criteria for the code reads, but it's right. three fails in some period or... Okay, so basically once it's in limp mode, you cannot trust scan data. You can see our temperature is stuck. Our OD pressure switch is closed. Now it may or may not be closed in limp mode, but our OD clutch state is not applied. So I want to get another scope channel on this OD pressure switch. You know, we can back up here and then it, it tried and then it just shut the whole system down. Very interesting. So I, I really don't like what the data is telling me in terms of everything's perfect. So this is right where it went to limp mode. It shut off the power to the, um, to, you know, to the transmission. You just boom. And you see the current is zero here. So the green channel is our overdrive solenoid and the red is the current and everything looks perfect. I mean the driver works fine. There's that voltage spike up to, you know, whatever the cutoff is 43 volts the blue spike let's measure the blue spike 43 volts exactly the same that's our known good that's the DR solenoid current looks fine you know less than 10 amps about 2 amps to keep it open spike occurs on every activation but yet it sets this circuit code. So, last thing I want to do is monitor the actual oil, OD oil pressure switch. See what that's doing. Um, again, the PCM got water inside. So, it took a couple days for the deoxid to clear up the ignition coil, whatever, circuit. But, now transmission circuit might also be affected. It's checking for this spike and it's not seeing it. Even though it's physically there, um, the computer is fussing about it. Uh, this is, does this thing still need an engine computer? <laughs> this is unbelievable. I was hoping to get this thing back on the rotate just by cleaning connectors. So let's get one more channel on there on this uh, OD pressure switch. Now let's see which one that is. OD pressure signal, pin 61, black and light green wire. Yeah, that's all we can do. So channel 4, yellow, is now on the OD pressure switch. Right here, pin 61 at the PCM, black and light green wire. So with the key on, it's hot. Let's just clear the DTC, start from scratch, clear fault code completed, okay nothing changed there, so everything's energized, you have battery voltage, uh, let's start it up and look at live data, see if we can trust the live data, so the only thing I'm interested in is OD, pressure switch and clutch state. Okay, grab that. So right now, 
pressure switch is open. So when this pressure switch closes, it should pull it down to ground. Let's fire it up. Let's see if it does its little solenoid check there. Boom. Okay, everything seems to be stable. It's good. You can even bump up the yellow. Let's see, key off. Key on. Start up. I want to get a known good solenoid check. Okay, it did its little check there. Put it in reverse. So you can see the, the switch does react. Boom. I didn't like that. Just power breaking it. And boom, the switch is closed. It is closed. So what did it not like on this screen? And you can see, you know, applied it, switch reacted. Take a picture of that. And read fault code P0760 pending. If this data looks perfect, then it's setting a false solenoid code. Is that believable? Well, yes, it was setting false coil codes before. And like I said, the deox had fixed that. Now it's a trans false transmission code. Now that's too bad. All right, so I have all this data saved. And by the way, I always post a link to the PicoScope data on my Google Drive so you guys can follow along. Uh, it's very, a good way to learn is to follow along. Look at the waveforms yourselves. You can download the PicoScope software for free. Uh, and just open up the waveforms and you can zoom in and see exactly what we're looking for here. So I'm looking for the command the current through the solenoid and this pressure switch to all react at the same time and they absolutely do so there's the OD command there's the OD current and then almost instantly the OD pressure switch gets pulled down and that's when it says it's um, closed let's look at this one this event again within I mean this happens very fast so here's the solenoid command and the switch opens delta is 11 milliseconds instant reaction so that's great everything inside the transmission is working fine <clears throat> um, and you can see the command here it's pulsed and then it holds it down a little more the current goes up a little more and then when it lets it go you see very nice voltage spike to 40 whatever 43 volts that's what the code setting criteria is looking for. And right here, I did it three more times. Each time looks absolutely perfect. The drivers are good. The pressure switch is reacting. There is its neighbor. And then it does it one more time right here. Pressure switch reacts. And then it does a triple. Boom, boom, boom. I don't know if it's checking itself over and over again, if it's ready to fail. Then right here, It says, we're done, limp mode, game over. So we can reproduce this. So I got this saved. Let's run the scope one more time. Key on. Start it up. Foot on the brake. Forward. I'm just going to let it sit and dry for a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit of gas. Boom. Okay, still happy. 
Man, as soon as I started accelerating, it went and then shut off. Let's back up one screen. There it is, same exact triple, triple, triple spike, and then done. And if we uh, scan it for codes one more time, I'm sure now it'll say active 760. Okay, easy to reproduce in the parking lot. This man just won't quit. Now it's, you can feel it's rough. Check engine light is flashing, now it's solid. It's misfiring for sure. Now are we in limp mode on our transmission? Yes we are. It's stuck at zero now. Well why not? It's just, just real. Here you go Kip. Scan it for codes. Oh it's all new and... No, uh -oh, we got a cylinder five misfire and 2314 ignition coil five secondary circuit insufficient ionization. So, like I, you know that deoxid, it saved it for, it, it brought it back to life, but this kind of crap is gonna keep happening because there's water inside the engine computer and you can't get it out. So it needs an engine computer anyways. It might need a solenoid pack. We're back to where I left <laughs> off the first time. It is ridiculous. So clearing the codes, still got a cylinder five secondary circuit insufficient ionization. That's the water in the computer, so we could we could dump it and deox it and it might fix it. But <laughs> I don't know. The the water leak needs to be addressed first. So finally, a happy ending on the Russian ProMaster disaster van. It's been a month since my last trip. This was uh, right after Christmas. I went down there the second time for the transmission issue. And then the van started misfiring again. And I basically called the computer the second time. <laughs> uh, finally, Kip down at ProMasters only. He went to the first dealer. They gave him the runaround. They can't program a used computer. The guy didn't know what he was doing. So he took it to another dealership. Apparently they were more friendly, but they still made him buy a brand new PCM. So here's the email that he wrote me. This is the final update from Kip. Good news fixed. I drove the van 30 plus miles back from the dealership, mostly city by a little highway, running all six gears as it should. No codes. I'm prepared to claim victory. That's the good news. The bad news is the dealer charged me $1,300. Dollars high, but not the end of the world. The van is now back at the shop, and they are going to waterproof it so this does not happen again. Yeah, so that was an expensive water leak. This van's on its at least its third engine computer just because the water leak wasn't fixed. <laughs> so I told the guys like, there's no guarantee here. You have to fix the water leak. It's going to happen again and again and again. Uh, obviously, the downtime, it, the van's been off the road for almost two months now, but it is fixed, and our diagnosis was spot on. Um, you know, you might ask, was it worth doing two dedicated trips? I mean, for a guaranteed diagnosis where the parts can was avoided, yes, it's absolutely worth it. So, you know, obviously, I. I did give him a discount on, on travel, and, you know, then Kip, you know, Kip has so many hours into this van, but, and then the dealer, <laughs> like, you know, it's 1300 bucks, so the owner of the van is pretty broke. He was like, can I get a discount, please? I'm like, maybe, <laughs> a little bit, but there's, there's already a pretty big discount. But that's the way it goes. The van is back on the road. As long as the computer stays dry should go for you know for a good long while so thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you on the next one bye, -bye. all right Arifas have found a problem this tube appears to not be working which would explain it there's blockage in there if you blow in there it'll smooth out but yeah that's the main yeah there you go look at that that's gonna that's gonna be helpful. Da horror show. Eh, interesting. <laughs>